Okay, so we're going to do 5.5 in probably sections here, okay? So the first thing I want to do is I want to review a little bit of grade 9 stuff. Okay, and that's how to graph on a coordinate grid because we're going to be taking a look at the domain and range like that. So we need to understand like how the coordinate grid works and how we read it. Okay, so the first thing I want to talk about is an ordered pair. We've talked about this earlier in the unit, but um, never enough talking about this. Okay, coordinate grid is written as an X and a Y. We always have brackets around them, separated by a comma. Um, so remembering that this is the domain and this is the range now is how we're going to refer to them. Okay, so um, I've just, I'm going to give you a couple of examples of how you can see a coordinate grid um, drawn a little bit differently than maybe what we saw in grade 9 all the time. And this one, each square on the grid represents 5 units, so the increments are a little bit different. So if we were looking at point A, we're going over 5, 10 which is our x value, and then up 5, 10, 15, which is how we got our y value. B is right on the y-axis, so obviously we had no horizontal movement, so our x-coordinate was 0, and then we went down 5, so negative 5, and then C is negative 5, negative 10, and then it's on the x-axis, so that coordinate would be 0. Okay, so if we were to work through this, let's do this. Let's take a look at D, and this has increments of 2. Okay, each square in the grid represents 2. So over 2, so negative 2 because we move to the left, and then down negative 2, negative 4. So that's how we would write that ordered pair. E is on the y-axis, so we have 0 movement horizontally. And then we went up 2, so positive 2. F is on the x-axis, so we went over 2, 4, 6. That would be our first coordinate. And then 0 because there was no vertical movement. G is over 2 and 4. And then it's moving downward into quadrant 4, so down negative 2, negative 4. So that's what that would look like. Okay, if we plotted these, uh, these are going up by 2s now, increments here. So P is 12 and negative 8, so we go all the way over here, 2, 4, 6, 8, 12. And then negative 8 would be negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, negative 8. And of course, remembering that we put a dot and then we put the capital letter beside it, that's how we label um, points on the coordinate grid dot representing where it is, the letter P identifying which uh, point it is. Okay, so let's just do one more and then you can take a look at these and the notes are going to be posted. Zero, so that's our first coordinate, so we have no movement, we're going to be on the y-axis and then up two, four, put a dot here and we're going to end up with capital Q right beside there. Okay, so this is really important. So we're, there's a whole bunch of things that we're going to have to review from grade nine before we can be really successful in this in this unit. Um, and one of the things is how to write an inequality because that's what we're going to be doing um, to show domain and range. So just a quick little review. Um, this is the less than symbol, greater than symbol. This one is the less than or equal to. Okay, so we have that extra line underneath there. And this one here, greater than or equal to. The other thing that I want to remember, where it remind you about, is open and closed circles. And I don't know if you remember this from the inequality unit. An open circle does not include the number, okay? So these are your less than and your greater than symbols, okay? are going to have an open circle. And the closed circle includes... So that is going to be um, connected to our less than or equal to and greater than or equal to. Okay, and so we're going to go into a little bit more detail, but those are just the, the gist of it. Okay, so another quick reminder, we're wrapping this all together here. This is the most important section of this entire unit. Domain um, is the X values and range are the Y values. Now I just want to give you a little trick here, what I was taught when I was in grade 9 with Mr. Ann Holt, okay? Domain comes first in the alphabet, range is later in the alphabet, and so X comes before Y. So that's just a little trick when we first learn these, okay? <clears throat> so we know that is a, something is a function if no X's repeat, right? We've talked about that, no X's repeat. So what we're going to introduce here is something that's a quick look if we have a graph, and that's the vertical line test. If we can draw a line in a graph and only touch one point, then none of the X is repeated. You can see that, right? Okay, so this would be yes, a function, because all the X values are different. This one here, you can see that if I drew a vertical line through here, these all have the same X value. The X value is one. So I'm just gonna show you what I mean by that. If I wrote this coordinate right here, it is one and 
3, and this one is 1 and 4, and this one here is 1 and 5, and you can clearly see that all of the x values are the same. So if you saw this as ordered pairs, you'd recognize that, but a real quick way to do this is the vertical line test. You can see that if we could cut a line through here, we would touch more than one point on um, this graph, therefore the x values are the same. So these ones all have dis like distinct x values. This is negative 3 and negative 1, and this point's negative 2 and 0, and this point's negative 1 and 1, and you can see all of the x values are a little bit different. Okay, so if we were to identify which graph represents a function by simply looking at the graph and doing the vertical line test, and you can't just do it over here and go, oh yeah, that only has crossed through one dot. Like you have to actually physically look and see you can cross through here and here and touch more than one. So this would be a no because the x values repeat. Okay, here when we're talking about a graph of world populations, this would be a function because all of the x's are different. Okay. So, in normal class time, I would ask you to do a U-try here, so let's just go through this together. Okay, you can see that if you did a vertical line test anywhere on here, you would only pass through one point. Okay, outside temperature, none of the X's repeat if we did a vertical line test. Here, though, we're talking about mass of students against height. Here, here, you can see that the X values would be the same, so this would be a no. This is yes, a function yes a function, this is no a function, and this one here, if we had vertical line test, this would also be no. Okay, this is the big idea in this section, okay? How are we gonna determine the domain and range? So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remind ourselves, domain is the x, range is the y, and now we're gonna give um, the actual <clears throat> set of the domain. Now the first thing I want you to do is I want you to take a look these two endpoints are closed circles. That means they include, so these are the inequality symbols that we're going to be using, okay? So we're gonna start our set, okay? And we're gonna set up our domain here. Okay, and I'm gonna tell you that we're gonna put the X right in the center because this goes from here to here. So our x's are greater than or equal to, because we read from the variable, negative 2, but less than or equal to, and the maximum they can be is 2. And you'll get better at this, okay? All right, next one we're going to do is our range. So let's open up our set brackets here. I usually set this up. Now you should be able to see, and I sometimes do this in a different colored pen, which I don't have handy right now, but... The smallest that our y's can be are 0, and the maximum that they can be is 6. But it includes all the little decimal numbers and fractions that are all in there. Okay, so that's why we're going to use an inequality. So I'm going to set my y in the middle. And as soon as you know that there's a minimum and a maximum, these symbols will never change, okay? They will always be, because you read from the variable, y is greater than or equal to, but less than or equal to. So you have to have a really good handle on how you read that. Okay, so what's the smallest that y can possibly be? Zero. What's the greatest that y can be? Six. Okay, I'm shortcutting this right now until we get good at this. Okay, so here we go. We got one end point, then we, and so we know it's a closed circle, so we know we have to use one of these two inequality symbols. But then when we look over here, there's nothing. And so I always over exaggerate this to explain this to kids. This is going to go on forever. Okay? So that means that x is the smallest it can be is negative 2, but then it goes on infinitely. So let's talk about our domain. Okay, x is going to be now greater than or equal to negative 2. It can be negative 2, and then it can be any other number that is bigger than negative 2, so greater than or equal to. If I were to do my range now, and again, I should have had a different colored pen here. Here's where my y's the smallest they can be, and you can see this arrow, okay, and I'm exaggerating it now, but the y's are gonna infinitely get larger. So y is greater than or equal to, and the minimum that it could be was negative one. Okay, now I want to stop there because the video is almost at 10 minutes here. I want you to sort of mull this over, and then we're gonna, there's another set of examples here, okay, and then there's some u tries here. 
I want you to give that a whirl.